Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be going over uh, game two of Kasparov versus Deep Blue. It was the match that was played in 1997, so let's just dive right into the game, guys. So uh, Deep Blue had uh, the white pieces with Kasparov with black. Deep Blue opens with e4. Kasparov responds with e5. Knight f3, all standard stuff so far, guys. Knight c6 by Kasparov. So it looks like we're going to see a more common system by Kasparov this time around than um, in game one where he played a King's Indian uh, double fee and keto system. Bishop b5. Okay. Deep blue goes for the Rilo Lopez. One of white's um, strongest openings. Very good results with uh, Rilo Lopez. Um, so let's see what Kasparov plays. He plays a6. a6 is a good move. Asking the question to the bishop already. The bishop has two possible choices, taking the knight or retreating. Okay. Now, the reason for taking the knight is black would end up doubling his pawns. Uh, some people like uh, like that, giving up the, the bishop early on um, and doubling what's kind of like a long-term structural uh, weakness for black. These two pawns will be doubled. Uh, retaining the bishop is perfectly fine as well. In fact, retaining the bishop is what I prefer. Um, I definitely value my uh, light squared bishop quite a bit, um, I d and I don't part with it very easily. Knight f6, attacking the pawn, but not really attacking the pawn. Um, if black were to take this pawn, he can get in a little bit of trouble um, in terms of falling behind a development. So not really attacking the pawn, more of a, a development move. Deep blue castles. Kasparov plays bishop e7, a very quiet move. Um, maybe he could have played a different move, um, maybe a bishop to a different square, but he, <clears throat> excuse me, he, tr he chooses a uh, bishop e7, very quiet, uh, quiet looking move. Rook e1, protecting the pawn by deep blue. b5. Very common theme in Rio Lopez is seeing the a6 b5 pawn thrust. Trying to shut down the bishop on the knight. The bishop goes back. And now d6. Another very solid move by Kasparov here, by playing d6. Um, Kasparov had other choices. Uh, he could have played possibly knight here. He could have castled. But he chose bishop e7. Or excuse me, he chose d6. Bishop e7 was uh, two moves ago. All right. So Kasparov's adopting another very solid structure, uh, this time with the black pieces. c3. Making space for the bishop to retreat, if need be. Castling by Kasparov. H3. This is kind of a safety move uh, to for annoying pins on here on g4. So um, I'm guessing Deep Blue didn't really like um, the thought of the bishop coming to g4 and kind of uh, harassing the knight. So a little bit of a safety move here for white. And Kasparov re responds in kind. H6 d4 by deep loop so starting to open up the center start the game is starting to open up here rook e8 getting ready in case anything were to open on this file knight bd2 okay very logical moves on both sides so far bishop f8 Okay, this move is a little bit, um, not maybe necessary at this point in time, not really necessary to play bishop f8, but Kasparov chooses to play it. Um, he had other moves at his disposal. Um, knight a5 is one that jumps out uh, concretely at me, but he chose bishop f8. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys, got a little, uh, little bit of a cold, um, but uh, doing all, still doing all right. Deep blue goes for knight to f1. Very, very logical move. You see this a lot in uh, E4 openings. Um, Rio Lopez, Italian game. The knight will go to D2 and then F1. And then from F1, the knight has a lot of options. Uh, the two typical options are E3 and G3. Now this bishop is also open to play. Bishop D7. Knight G3. So Deep Blue um, decides to go for G3 to try to maybe uh, occupy F5 here. Very logical play by Deep Blue. Knight a5. So this is the move that I was foreshadowing uh, several moves ago. The knight goes to a5 to harass the bishop. And also it frees up the c-pawn for a c-pawn push. 
Um, Deep Blue wisely uh, retains the bishop bear and uh, plays the bishop back. C5 by Kasparov. B3. Knight back to C6. So the knight went to A5, harassed the bishop, C5, uh, and then knight goes back to C6. Very common in the Rilo Lopez. So far, the game has been very standard, very, very bookish. Um, let's see what else happens here. D5. So at this point, Deep Blue um, can decide to open up the game or to close the game. And at this point... Um, so for opening up the game, what I mean is he could take here, he could take here, and then the D file would, would open up here, um, and the game would be much more active and have an open nature. Deep Blue uh, decides to close the game and by playing D5. Not so common with computers. Uh, typically, computers um, like to open things up, and um, that's where they, they do best with uh, where, when tactics are can really uh, happen on open boards. D5, knight E7, <clears throat> bishop E3, developing move uh, by deep blue. This move uh, by Kasparov is also good. Um, the knight might get some uh, life on G6. Knight G6, queen D2. Looks like possibly maybe a bishop sacrifice on H6. Pawn takes, queen takes, but I don't think so. I don't think it's really there, but um, but it's definitely setting up for it. Knight h7. From here, the knight may want to hop to g5. a4 by deep blue. Trying to soften up the queen side. Knight h4. Kasparov is feeling maybe a little bit cramped and he wants to trade some pieces off the board. So this makes perfect sense. Knight takes, queen takes. Queen e2, shuffling the queen over here, eyeing this pawn. Kasparov decides to retreat the queen back to d8. Maybe feeling the queen is a little bit out of place and would maybe do a better job um, back in the on his side of the board. So, very, very good um, point by Kasparov. Um, sometimes in certain positions, there'll be a, a piece that is out of, out of place, and it would it can be out of place for a very long time. So he makes a wise move, and he decides to re retreat the queen uh, right away. B4 by deep blue. Queen c7. Trying to hold his structure all together here. Rook a c1. Very nice move. The rook is hiding behind the bishop and pawn, but if things were to open up a bit, you could see that this queen would be uh, already under attack and some pressure. So very nice, um, nice sneaky move by uh, Deep Blue. Now it's Kasparov's turn, to, uh, and he decides to close, um, well, this time the center as well, by c4. Deep Blue started by playing d5, and now Kasparov plays uh, c4. So a much more closed position here. Rook a3, adding protection to the pawn and possibly leaving the, the potential to double up on the a file here. So that's a very nice move. This is a hard move to find um, by, by anyone, computer and humans alike. Very, very hard move and very nice move. Um, I quite like this move. Uh, and let's see how Kasparov responds. Rook e uh, c8. And then uh, deep blue decides to double up. Queen back to e8. Opening up the rook here. Maybe the queen might want to try to scoot over to f6. f4. Another very uh, nice attacking move by deep blue. Trying to bust open the center here. If black were to take here and white were to take back, don't think that would be so good for uh, black as this pawn would, um, would be under a lot of pressure by the bishop and would start to get piled on. Kasparov plays knight f6, back in the game. f takes e5, d takes e5. Creating a, a pass pawn here by deep blue. I really like deep blue's play this game. Very, very solid, very, very nice play. Lots of things to learn from this style of play. Queen f1, knight e8 by Kasparov. 
the knight would like to hop to d6 to uh, to stop this pass pawn. Knights are really great blockaders of pass pawns. Another thing to note, um, if your opponent has a pass pawn in um, your games, if you try to get a knight in front of the pass pawn, it really locks down the pawn, and the knight is still able to attack um, attack over the pawn on you know, many angles. So remember, knights are great blockaders. Queen f2. Looking to maybe eye in on b6, which is a slight weakness for uh, black here on black side of the board. Knight d6, which we talked about. And bishop b6. Queen e8. Not too much choices for the queen to go. And now rook uh, 3 back to a2. Okay, I'm not too sure exactly the purpose of this move. Um, possibly deep. Uh, Deep Blue analyzed that this rook is no longer needed on a3 and might be uh, needed to swing over to um, maybe f2, maybe c2 in the future, d2, e4. So, yeah, a, a little bit of a puzzling move uh, for me, but um, that is what Deep Blue played. <clears throat> uh, bishop e7, bishop c5, putting pressure on the knight. It's a very good knight by Kasparov. Bishop back to f8. Not too sure what Kasparov is planning here. He's kind of maybe playing um, a little bit of a waiting game, which we saw Deep Blue do, uh, do in game one. So the bishop kind of shuffled back and forth. Um, so maybe it's now Kasparov's turn to shuffle his, his pieces back a little bit to kind of wait for uh, Deep Blue's response. Knight f5. Very beautiful move by Deep Blue. Adding pressure onto these pawns here and especially uh, the knight. The pressure is too much, so the bishop takes the knight on f5. E takes f5. And now f6. So Kasparov has uh, made some concessions. <clears throat> on the queen side of the board, He has he's strong on the, the light squares, but very weak on the dark, squ dark squares. On the center and king side of the board, all of his pawns are on dark squares. So he has a lot of queen side, um, excuse me, light square weaknesses. So even though his pawn chain is connected here, um, he's created a lot of color weaknesses um, on both sides of the board. Bishop takes d6 by deep blue, and bishop takes back by d6. Okay, this is a this bishop is not bad. It is kind of blocked in by the pawn, but if things were to open up, such as an e4 move, or if, um, or if these pawns were to get traded, this would be a nice square for the bishop. But right now, the bishop is doing. Um, a very good job of blocking this pawn. I would say that's probably the best uh, the best point right now. He's doing a nice job uh, blocking the pass pawn. Pawn takes pawn, and pawn takes pawn. And now bishop e4. So just a uh, protect, protection move, protecting this pawn and that pawn. And this bishop is kind of like acting like a big pawn itself, but it works out uh, pretty well for... Um, Deep blue, deep uh, Kasparov's not really too able to attack this bishop um, at the moment or to undermine the structure. And notice how we have the the rooks kind of staring at each other. Kasparov takes, and now queen takes a two. Now, if I were to ask myself in one of my own personal games, would I rather be white or black? I'd rather be white in this position. Even though I have some kind of uh, pawn weaknesses here and here, and my bishop is kind of locked out of the game, um, uh, white has complete control over this A-file, and I think that's going to prove to be devastating. Queen d7, Kasparov still holding on. Queen a7, now coming all over to the other side of the board, attacking Kasparov's queen. Rook c7. Attacking Deep Blue's queen. Queen b6. Queen b7. And now rook a8 check. King has a couple of possibilities. King h7. King f7. And Kasparov goes for king f7. Queen to a6. And queen c7. You can kind of feel that 
uh, Kasparov was getting squeezed a little bit. And this is what is more typical of computers. They they tend to kind of um, squeeze you into these uh, positions where you can't really do too much. Um, but Kasparov's still playing um, good chess, and he's playing very resourceful chess, actually, and he's finding the best moves that, that he can find. Queen to c6. Queen b6, check. And now queen, uh, excuse me, king f1. And now rook b8. If uh, deep blue takes rook here and queen takes back, I believe Kasparov holds everything together. This pawn's protected, the bishop's protected by the queen, and then the game would probably most likely end in a drop. So deep blue does not decide to go for a rook trade. Deep blue instead plays rook a6, which is a very, very nice move. So now if queen takes here, he can recapture with the rook and he's on the bishop, or he can take with the pawn, and this pawn is protected by the bishop, and then uh, Kasparov, Kasparov will be in some real trouble. So in this position, this is the end of the game where Kasparov resigns. Uh, now Kasparov had a way um, out of this position. Um, what he could have played was queen e3. So um, Kasparov did resign, but he had a draw, but he, he missed it. He was so um, overwhelmed by deep blue's uh, play that he thought the position was just lost when it wasn't. So queen e3 here. So this is a position that he resigned, and he could have simply played queen e3. Not that the position is simple by any means. And then deep blue takes the bishop. So sac uh, temporarily sacrificing a bishop. And now rook e8. The point of rook e8, e8 here is to stop uh, queen e6 check. Deep blue um, in the analysis could play h4. And then queen takes e4. Rook check. King back to g8. And now queen d7. Now in this position, you can get the feeling that Kasparov may have a threefold repetition here, in which he does. Now I'll show you the one line which I like, which I think is very beautiful, but there's a couple of different variations um, as well where Kasparov can draw. King g1. Queen e3 check. King h2. Queen f4 check. King h3. So where is the check on the board right now that Kasparov can play? The only one that you can play at the moment that is safe is queen e3. Problem is after this check is that white has g3 and then black will be out of checks. So in this position, um, there's this move, rook e7. Rook e7 is a fantastic move and a very good find. Um, I think the reason why Kasparov resigned is probably because he did not find this move, uh, which uh, stops White's uh, play, and then the game is a draw. So the line I will show you goes, queen takes c7, queen takes f5. The queen is no longer protecting the pawn on f5, and now Kasparov can get um, a draw through threefold repetition. Let's say he plays in this position, king h2. We will simply go queen f4, g3, queen f2, and then we go here, uh, king h3. We can even go into more checks here. Queen f5, back here, checks. We could even go for this check, queen f1. The king will go back, and then it'll be a, it'll be a draw by threefold repetition. So let's go back to the position where Kasparov could have, um, could have drawn but decided to um, throw in the towel. It was right after rook a6. After rook a6, he resigned, and the move that would have saved him, queen e3. So it is a very complicated line to find, sacrificing the bishop, and then also finding rook e8. It's a, not, not an easy move to spot, but the draw was there. So that's it for the video, guys. Um, that's for game two. Um, game three will be coming up um, in a couple of days and um, I hope you all have a great day. 
And uh, thank you for tuning in. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.